very sad. And that's where we're going to begin today because police in a Chicago suburb, they are trying to unravel the reason for a deadly attack on the town's 4th of July parade. Still can't get over that one. A gunman opened fire from the top of a building in Highland Park, Illinois, killing six people and injuring dozens more. Police are holding a person of interest, they say, who posted violent videos and imagery on social media. They have also recovered the rifle allegedly used in the shootings. Joining us now is the longtime mayor of Highland Park. That's Nancy Rotering, who was leading yesterday's parade at the time. Mayor, good morning. I'm so sorry that you are a member of that club. Nobody wants to be in a mass shooting in your town. And we keep hearing that at first people thought that it was fireworks or firecrackers when they heard it. Take us there. What was the scene like for you? We were in the middle of a joyful celebration, having not had this parade for two years due to the pandemic. It was uh, multi-families deep along the parade route with a lot of folks shouting out. It was really joyful and wonderful. Um, I noticed the marching band racing down the sidewalk at one point and couldn't understand what they were doing, thought maybe they were late for a performance. And then suddenly police cars were racing towards us. And again, it was like, well, maybe somebody's having a heart attack. It just didn't mm -hmm. register that somebody was committing a mass shooting in, in my city. My husband was right there. He was right in the viewing stands. Um, and he said it was just measured, pop, 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 pop. And he said that's when they realized after about 15 of those that it wasn't fireworks, that it was yeah. gunshots. Mm. Yeah, what can you tell us about the suspect? I've heard that you've, you've had some connection to him in the past. I was his Cub Scout pack leader. He was a little boy at the time. Uh, my heart breaks for everybody in this town. I'm not sure what happened uh, to him to compel him to commit this kind of evil in his hometown. Um, but we have a city that is in deep mourning today, and uh, we are going to take a long time to heal from all of this. So when you heard it was him, Mayor, what did you think? I saw an interview with his uncle who described him as a shy kid. There was no indication that he would do this type of thing. Yet the imagery on social media tells a very different story. What's your recollection of him? I think it's important to note, my recollection of him was as a sweet little boy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that, that we're glorifying what he put on social media. I don't want to encourage other people to think that this is a way to, uh, you know, lead into this kind of violence. We need to have a very real national conversation about why we're okay with allowing weapons of war on our streets and why we're okay with weekly having mass shootings. Um, the mayors of um, Toledo, of, of Dayton, the mayor of Buffalo, um, several other mayors have reached out. And none of us think this will happen in our city. And we need to ask ourselves why this is becoming a weekly occurrence in our nation. Mayor, we have an issue with these individuals that are filled with rage in our communities that are committing domestic terrorism. What do you believe needs to be done? And given the fact, as Gail mentioned, you, you knew this individual when he was young, but he's not alone. Right. There are thousands, maybe right. millions, of individuals just like him. What do we need to do to reach these kids at a young age so they don't commit these crimes? I think it's a couple of things. First, I think we obviously need to provide significantly greater resources in terms of mental health care. We've seen those scaled back dramatically in the last few decades. But let's ask the question of why enraged people in other civilized nations in our world aren't committing these mm. crimes. We know that this is a unique American issue, and that's right. why we need to take necessary steps. I mean, all of these weapons and these mass shootings have been legally obtained. That should tell us that the laws are not doing their job. When you have a city coming together to celebrate freedom and independence, you shouldn't have to come fearing for your life. That's not what this nation is mm. about, and we need to do something about it. Mayor, on the flip side, uh, we saw incredible acts of kindness and heroism uh, from members of the community. Uh, some of the images were heartbreaking. Fathers putting their children in dumpsters to protect them, but also people reaching out to families and taking in kids just to make sure that they were okay until the police could get to them. Describe to us how the community is faring this morning. I'm sorry, if you could repeat that, the train just went the by. The train, yeah. Yeah, there's a train. I know how it feels when you're doing a live shot. Uh, describe sorry about that. how the community so, is faring. So I think you were asking how, 
Right. The, the community is absolutely in mourning, and the community is in shock. Uh, we come together and care for each other. We will be there for each other. The outpouring of love, not just from within the community, but from across the nation, has been unbelievable. But let's ask why we, ha why we got here. I, I am appreciative of all that people are doing to try to provide care. But how many times do we need to go through this drill? There literally is a handbook that was sent to me by several mayors telling me, oh, this is what you need to do in the wake of a mass shooting. We need to have a much stronger conversation about why these weapons of war are still permitted in our society. Mayor Rotering, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you joining us. And collectively, as a country, we need to share this pain because we are dealing with this on what seems like a weekly, weekly basis. basis. Yeah. And we appreciate you joining us. Right.